and welcome to Model Kit Stuff and this is a quick tips video um, on how to thin your Vallejo model colour paint. So I hear people from time to time grumble about uh, Vallejo paint and how they struggle to get it through an airbrush. Well Vallejo paint like any other paint um, behaves differently depending on the room temperature and things like that but in this video I'm going to give you a very simple easy to remember rule which should give you perfect results almost all the time and the rule is this 50-50 it's as simple as that 50% paint 50% something else. It's very, very easy. However you're going to mix it, 50% of your mix needs to be paint. And if you follow that rule, your paint will always be the right thickness in an airbrush and it'll be the right thickness for brush painting. So let's just explore that a bit more thoroughly. So there's a number of different ways of thinning um, Vallejo model colour. Um, you can thin it with just water out of the tap. It will thin really nice. Um, because it's a, a water-based acrylic, not an alcoholic, alcohol-based acrylic like say Tamiya paints are, um, you can thin it with water and get and get great results. You can also thin it with Vallejo's airbrush thinners. You can also thin it with Vallejo's Flow Improver. All of these will thin the paint, but your rule is no more than 50% thinned. Now you can thin Vallejo paint with other thinners, um, but you need to work out for yourself what that thinning ratio is, unless the manufacturer of the thinners has told you the thinning ra ratio for paints. <coughs> um, so when you come to thin the paint, the first thing you need to do is make sure you've given this a really good shake. There is a tendency um, for the pigment to settle in the bottom of the bottle. So however you store it, whether it's upright or lying down, you will have some form of pigment separation and we need to give that a good mix. So a minute, two minutes, depending on how long since you last used the paint. The longer you leave it, the more separated the paint will have come. So we need to give that a good shake. And ideally you want to be putting something in there to help the agitation, whether that be um, a mixing bowl like one of these or some other object like um, a nut. Just make sure that anything you put in there that's going to sit in there for a while isn't going to um, change the nature of the paint. It's not going to rust in the bottle, for example. So let's give that a shake. Okay, so we've given this a good shake for a couple of minutes. And we're gonna put one drop of the paint in the, in the palette. Now if I put one drop of thinner in, that's my 50-50 mix. And that is now the perfect consistency for any brush painting I want to do. You see if I run it up the side, it's free running but it's not too opaque. Now if it's a warm day and I'm wanting to paint something like, say I'm painting a couple of figures and I might want the, the paint around for I don't know, half an hour or so, then I recommend that you thin it with the flow improver rather than the thinner. The end consistency of the paint is the same, but the flow improver retards the drying time of the paint. So if you've not got a wet palette, for example, and you're painting some figures, um, thinning it 50-50 with, with just flow improver will work well. If you're mixing a greater volume of paint, 
if you're wanting more paint than one drop, then you can mix the two. And for an airbrush, I always recommend that. We'll come back to that in a minute. But for brush painting, 50% paint, 50% something else. So whether that is water and flow improver, water and thinner, thinner and flow improver, it really doesn't matter what your other 50% of your mix is, as long as your paint is 50% of it. If you do that, you won't have any problems brush painting with model colour. Now when it comes to thinning Vallejo paint for use in an airbrush, and again we're talking the model colour range here, not the model air range, we'll do another video on that one. The common um, complaint that I hear is that you get spatter um, and you've got good airflow but not good paint flow um, and all of that is to do with um, drying time. It could be air pressure, um, it could be um, atmospheric temperature but effectively it comes down to drying time in the chamber on the nozzle and between the airbrush and your model. It's all very simple to solve. Make sure that your air pressure is around about 2 bar or slightly above. That's the ideal pressure um, for your, your model colour paint. Okay. My other tip would be take your needle guard off. What can happen is that paint can build up on the rim of your needle guard um, and then occasionally you'll get a larger blob of paint land on your, the surface of your work and you don't want that. It can ruin all the hard work you're putting in. So take your needle guard off when the um, airbrush is in use and put it back on when you're finished before you put it in your airbrush holder or whatever you use. Make sure that that's on so you don't damage your needle. Next thing to say is that when you're um, airbrushing from time to time it's worth just cleaning the tip of your needle because um, paint can build up on there if it's starting to dry. So you can get a, a cotton board or something and just wipe it off or between your, your fingernails just pull it off and keep going. Um, but if it's to, if it's to do, and that's how to solve um, issues being caused by the fact that you're spray painting in a, in a warm room. So make sure your air pressure is right, periodically clean the tip of your brush and make sure you've not got your guard on so you're not getting any build up. The, the other reason that you might have those issues is if you've not got your paint mix right. Uh, and again, this is really easy. So the rule for mixing paint for your airbrush is a simple one. 50% paint, 50% something else. So it's very easy to remember the rule when you're mixing Vallejo paint it's 50-50. All the time it's 50-50 whether it's for airbrush or for brush. And that mix could be any. It could be 50% air, uh, airflow um, improver could be 50% thinner, it could be 50% water, it could be either any of those in combination. Now personally my preference is 50% paint, 25% thinner, 25% flow improver. It's just what I find has worked well for me um, over, over the years. Um, if it's cold um, and I'm spraying in the winter and the room is cold, then I'll tend to drop off the flow improver because it's not necessary and just use the thinner. Um, if it's warm, I sometimes will just use the flow improver um, to give me uh, a much reduced drying time. But in most circumstances, at most room temperature, I'm doing that. 
So let's have a quick see how that works. So I'm simply going to put two drops of paint in my palette. I don't like these dropper bottles particularly well. Um, and if you can put this in a different bottle, it always works well. Um, but I wanted to, you to see the labels so you knew it was using we were using the proper stuff. So one drop of flow improver. One drop of thinner. And you can see that's the same consistency that we mixed previously for paint brushing. And you could brush paint this perfectly well. But that is the perfect consistency to get into your airbrush. works perfectly every single time. There is no problem with Vallejo paint. It's a great paint, it's flexible, it's easy to use in your airbrush, it's easy to use on with a, a, a traditional paintbrush. All you've got to do is remember the 50-50 rule and you won't go wrong. Honestly, 50-50 and you won't go wrong.